Okay, so here we go on uh, limiting factors. So you need to know a definition of a limiting factor. So we'll start with that. So the law of limiting factors. Incidentally, SAC solution. You see, it's like this continuous flow of video information. So I said about SAC solution. He's the guy that did the original test to leave for starch experiments and, of course, the mineral nutrition stuff. Anyway, that aside, the law of limiting factors. states that the factor in the least supply limits the rate of photosynthesis, which as a statement doesn't really seem to make a huge amount of sense and that's why we're going to look at some lovely graphs. So, factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. Obviously, light and what's important about light is its intensity going to bracket their wavelength that also is important remember the absorption spectrum and action spectrum the light intensity how much light energy is available is really important because it's the light energy that is going to excite the electrons we've also got our reactants uh, our reactants are carbon dioxide and I'm going to put in water it is hugely difficult to uh, assess the impact of water on the rate of photosynthesis because of course most water is just used to make cells turgid and uh, stop wilting and things and if you sort of take the water away they tend to not function very well and of course temperature which affects enzymes So effectively, light intensity is going to limit how fast the light dependent stages will go. I'm just going to abbreviate light dependent stages to LDS. And of course they're producing NADP, H and ATP, so that will also then determine how fast Calvin cycle can go. And these two affect uh, the light independent stage or Calvin cycle. So let's have a look at uh, some graphs then, because we love a graph. So this is a pretty typical uh, limiting factor graph. Remember that the first thing to do when you look at a graph is to determine what the axes are. So this has got all of these factors on hasn't it so we've got rate of photosynthesis up the side and we've got light intensity at the bottom so this is a low light intensity and this is a high light intensity over here this would mean the lamp is closer to the plant and this would mean the lamp is further away now I know that's really obvious But if you're given a distance of lamp thing, obviously the graph's going to be the other way around. It's going to be reversed. <clears throat> and so it's, it's always worth just sort of annotating any graph. So what have we got? So as we increase light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis goes up. So in all of these bits down here where we've got a straight line relationship, so where it's directly proportional, that tells us that light intensity is limiting the rate. 
you know, it can't go any faster than this at that light intensity. It doesn't matter what your other conditions are like, it doesn't matter where in the world you are, if you've only got that light intensity, then that's how fast your rate of photosynthesis is. Bottom line. However, if you moved your lamp a couple of centimetres closer, you're going to get an increase in rate there for this one or to there for that one. So what does this flat line tell us here? That means that a different factor, not light intensity, How do we know that? Because as light intensity increases, photosynthesis doesn't go faster. It's going as fast as it possibly can, even though the light intensity is getting more and more and more. So our limiting factor then could be the temperature or it could be the carbon dioxide. That means if we increase one of those, the rate will go up. So you can see that if we increase the temperature, so we're increasing the temperature up to 30 degrees centigrade, the rate of photosynthesis then Again, limited by light, limited by light, not limited by light. But it's going faster just because you've raised the temperature. Now that doesn't have as much effect as raising the carbon dioxide. So if we leave the temperature the same but raise the carbon dioxide, so this one tells us that raising carbon dioxide from 0.2%, oh, sorry, not from 0.2, from 0.1 to 0.2% has more effect than raising temperature. Oh, I shouldn't abbreviate temperature. That's a really bad thing to do. And then, of course, if we raise both of the factors, that has an even bigger effect. So if we raise both temperature and carbon dioxide, that has the biggest effect of all. So it kind of in order, this gives us an order of how important those limiting factors are. So our first limiting factor, we can now put some numbers on this. First limiting factor is light intensity. That's the one that's going to limit it most if it's not in enough supply. Then carbon dioxide, because raising a carbon dioxide level has a much bigger effect than temperature, and lastly temperature. Now if I was asking, which you're so lucky that I'm not, but if I was asking questions on limiting factors, I think I'd be talking about greenhouses and polytunnels. You know, in winter it's pointless warming up a greenhouse or a polytunnel and in expecting a bigger rate of photosynthesis because the light intensity is kind of down here. So it kind of directly relates to crop production. The best thing you can give your plants is light and then you can start doing things like, you know, burning fossil fuels in the corner to increase the carbon dioxide and raise the temperature. Um, then there's a point to it. But actually just heating or just pumping in carbon dioxide by itself not really any point unless you've got your light intensity up so it's not limiting the rate. Okay, I think that's all I know about limiting factors, to be fair. <laughs>